In other words, God don't have to change his mind because he gets it right the first time and every time. To God be the glory for all that he has done and all that he is doing and for the fact that he is God and beside him there is no other. And today I thank God for Jesus Christ, my Savior, his precious Holy Spirit. I thank God for our ministers and deacons and for all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We are going to continue with where we've been uh, all of this month in the book of Genesis. And today we are going to look at chapter number 39. Amen. Chapter number 39 of the book of Genesis. And I'm going to read all 23 verses. That don't mean we're going to be a long time, but it just means that I'm reading it so that you can know where I'm coming from, that I'm not sharing something with you that's not within the Bible. Amen? Amen. 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 Easy book to find. It's the first one. If you missed that one, amen. That's all I'll say if you missed that one. Beginning with verse number one of that 39th chapter, it said, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard of an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Right. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Right. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him and he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake yes. and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house yes. and in the field and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he knew not all he had save the bread which he did eat and Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. Not tell a lie, but lie with me. Uh, but he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master wanted not what is with me in the house. And he hath committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He didn't say against you, he said against God. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Amen. Leave your garments, brethren. Amen. And, and it, came, it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he had brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. But he came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. Amen. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant 
which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, and a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And, jo and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. May the Lord bless the reader, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Father in heaven, we thank you now. As we decrease that you might increase, we ask now in the name of Jesus that you would have your way in this preaching hour. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we give God glory. We give him honor and we give him praise for truly he is the head of my life. And I thank God for Jesus Christ, my Savior, his precious Holy Spirit, who indwells me, not only me, but every believer. And I thank God for his precious Holy Spirit. Did you enjoy our music ministry today? Amen. Satan has been very, very busy uh, today messing with our equipment. Now he's trying to mess with me. Amen. But I'm going to preach no matter what he does. Amen. So today, we've been talking about dealing with obstacles on the road to your blessing. And, and we're going to stick with that theme. But today, I want to tell all of us, don't give don't give up your integrity. Amen. Don't give up your integrity. Amen. Today, once again, we are going to continue the third part of our sermon study from the theme dealing with obstacles on the road to your blessing. We will continue looking at the life of Joseph and the things he, that he faced on the road to his blessings, which was that of becoming prime minister of Egypt. Look at the person sitting next to you, if you don't mind, and tell them God has to prepare you for your blessing. Look at the person on the other side of you, if you don't mind, and tell them the same thing. God has to prepare you for your blessing. I know, I know, I know. We, we, we want it now. Amen. We want it right now. We, we, we think we are ready for it, but, but God knows that he has to prepare us, amen, for our blessing. In the past two sermons, I shared that every obstacle that we as Christians face in life have a twofold purpose. This is important to remember because it helps us to remain focused and look for God's purpose in everything, no matter the obstacle. So we need to remember two things. First of all, obstacles are designed to stop us from reaching and receiving the blessing that God have already said is ours. You do know that when God speaks a thing, it's already done. Satan uses obstacles to distract us and stop us from receiving the blessing that God has for us. He sows discouragement. He plants doubt and fear. He surrounds us with jealousy. Talking about Satan. You see, Satan don't want us where God has called us to be, nor have what God 
has said is ours. And then the second thing we need to remember is the same obstacle is allowed by God to prepare us for the blessing that God has for us. In other words, the obstacle is God's purpose. God had called Joseph to be prime minister of all of Egypt because God was preparing to save a whole nation. But God had to first prepare Joseph for the position before he could become prime minister of all of Egypt. The hatred of his brothers being thrown in a pit, being sold to a band of Ishmaelites, being sold to Potiphar, being lied on by Potiphar's wife, being thrown in prison and forgotten about by Pharaoh's chief butler, whom he had interpreted a dream for, was all preparation and part of God's plan to place Joseph in the position of prime minister of all of Egypt. What you are going through right now, what looks like an obstacle right now, just might be God preparing you for what he's called you to or what he has that's right in front of you that you can't even see. In other words, in other words, what's, what, what you are going through and dealing with right now, it might be preparation ground for your blessing. Don't despise God's preparation room because God is a God of not only purpose, but of preparation. Now, last week we talked about Joseph's brothers who represented the first of the kinds of people or obstacles that we face on the road to our blessing. They represented those who are close to us or get close to us but are actually jealous of us and what God is doing in our lives. You do know folk will become jealous of you. Because of that jealousy, uh, they are always plotting on how to trip you up or get rid of you. I, I shared that before we share our dreams, we need to pray. Because you can't share your dreams and thoughts with everybody. You see, I closed last week by sharing with you uh, to pray for friends and your enemies. Because sometimes they are one and the same. Now, in our text today, we find Joseph in Potiphar's house. Now, even though he's a Hebrew slave in the house of an Egyptian officer, God's hand is still upon him and everything that he does prospers because the plan that God has for him has not changed. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give thee an expected end. In, in other words, in other words, your current situation cannot change the outcome of the plan that God has already designed just for you. Potiphar's house, even though it didn't look like it, was just another preparation spot for Joseph on his way to the office of prime minister. Now, verses 4 through 6 of this 39th chapter of Genesis tells us this about Joseph. Verse 4 says, And Joseph found grace, which means favor in his sight, talking about Potiphar, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And verse 5 said, And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house, watch this for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Verse 6 said, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph, look at this, was a goodly person and well-favored. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Now, 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 God allowed Joseph to prosper even in his current situation 
as a slave because God had bigger plans for Joseph than that of being a slave. Joseph went to Egypt as a slave, but that was a temporary situation that would lead to the plan that God had for him. You can't always go by what it looks like. You see, too many of us give up in our current situation because of what it looked like. Because we've forgotten what God has spoken to us. Let, let me say this. Not only did Potiphar see the hand of God upon Joseph and everything he did, but Satan also saw the hand of God upon Joseph's life. Likewise, Satan sees the hand of God upon each and every Christian's life. And he works hard to keep us from being all that God has called us to be. Now, Joseph's test today in our sermon is about integrity. Let me ask, let me ask this question. How well do you guard your integrity? As a Christian, how important is your integrity to you? Now, integrity is defined as the quality of being honest and having strong moral principle and moral uprightness. Now, now, now this describes Joseph to a T, but does it describe you? You see, our text tells us of Joseph's encounter with, with Potiphar's wife as she tempted him to lay with her. You see, first of all, Joseph's integrity wouldn't allow him to yield to this temptation because he was honest, had strong moral principles and moral uprightness. He could not yield to this temptation. He would not yield to temporary satisfaction that carried with it permanent consequences. You do know that satisfying the flesh is temporary, but the consequences sometimes can last for a lifetime. You see, Joseph's integrity was at stake. You see, Potiphar's wife wanted his body, but what was really at stake here is Satan wanted his integrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joseph's integrity was at stake. You see, Potiphar's wife wanted his body. But what was really at stake here is that Satan wanted his integrity. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me see if I can say it this way. If, if you are a fisherman or a fisherwoman, <laughs> because there are some women that love to fish too. Amen. Amen. Common sense tells you that you don't put a hook in the water without first baiting the hook. Okay, I don't have any fishermen. Y'all trying to figure out what I'm about to say next. Amen. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't put, amen, a hook in the water without first putting some bait on the hook. I, I, I need to tell somebody uh, this morning, be careful what you bite. Let, let me ask this question. Let me, let me ask this question. Amen. How much is your integrity worth? You see, Satan knows that he can't take our salvation. So since he can't take our salvation, what he wants is the next best thing that we have, and that is our integrity as a Christian. 
You see, a Christian without integrity loses not only their testimony, but they lose their effectiveness. You see, if you have no integrity as a Christian, nobody wants to hear about your Jesus. Have you, have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed how when you talk to people about salvation, they always bring up and talk about other Christians who have, watch this, lost their integrity. They always want to talk about that preacher that have lost his integrity. You see, what looks like an innocent way to get around the system on your job or some other situation could be the very thing the enemy is using to discredit you and cause you to lose your integrity. How much, how much is your integrity really worth? Now, even though Satan saw that no matter what he threw at Joseph, Joseph maintained his integrity. But it didn't stop Satan from trying. Just because you say no today don't mean he won't be back to try you again tomorrow. While you are sleeping and resting, demons are sitting there trying to figure out a way to steal your integrity. You see, Joseph had endured the hatred of his brothers, being thrown in a pit, being sold to the Ishmaelites, being sold to Potiphar, being tempted by Potiphar's wife, and, and then being lied on by Potiphar's wife. But watch this. Yet, he maintained his integrity. My question to you today is how much is your integrity worth? You see, the enemy reminds us that we're just human. And it's okay to be human when all the time he's not interested in our humanness, but he wants our integrity. Have you ever had a conversation with yourself and told yourself that God is a forgiving God? And if I do this or if I make this decision, God will forgive me. While you are absolutely, positively correct, one thing that you have no control over, and that is the consequences of your choices and decisions. How much is your integrity really worth? Can I, can, I, can I tell the story of Joseph and this temptation? Amen, amen. I, I know, I know, I know, amen. Some of us, brethren, amen, would not have ran right out of the house. I know you're sitting there like saying, oh, I would have ran, right? Right out of the house. Well, God bless you. So, so let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just share, amen, quickly here, uh, this story of Joseph. Let me, let me, let me share uh, this situation that Joseph found himself in. He, 
He's now in Egypt, the place that God had called him to be. But he's not yet in the position that God called him to be. Now, you do know that every thing he faced on the way to becoming prime minister, God had a purpose for him going through that. You see, because as prime minister, Joseph was going to have to deal with people that were both jealous and hated him. But who could teach you better the lesson of jealousy and hatred than the folk in your house? And if he could deal with the folk in his house, then he would be prepared to deal with folk that he really didn't know. Watch this now, watch this. Uh, not only that, but, 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 but he also had to realize that the folk that are close to you don't always have your best interest at heart. There was nobody closer than his brothers. But they taught him a, a hard lesson. Let me, let, me, let me see if I can put it like this. Some of your biggest haters are church folk. Some of your greatest haters are church folk. Not only that, uh, those who are most jealous of you are not out in the world, but those that you sit beside don't look at nobody on Sunday morning. The church is supposed to be called a house of worship, a, a house of praise. But a lot of times, it's the house of jealousy. I, I kind of figured it was going to get quiet. Amen, amen. If you could handle the gift, God would have given it to you. The reason why you don't have that gift that you want. It's because God already knows that it would handle you rather than you handling it. Amen. The reason why they are singing and I'm preaching is because uh, maybe I can't handle singing. Even though I can sing a little bit. But we have to understand God bestows upon us the gift that we can handle. Watch this. And, and the only gift that you can use that will bring glory to God is the one that God has blessed you with. You see, sometimes we can't do what God has called us to do because we are too busy looking at somebody else. You, 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 know, that, you know that commercial, one of these insurance commercials? It shows that fellow, hey amen, he, he, he's standing on the side of the road and he's dancing. Y'all know the commercial I'm talking about. And, and, and he's dancing. This fellow's driving down the road and, 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 and all of a sudden he sees him dancing. He looks over, hey amen, watching him and boom, runs in the back of a garbage truck. And, and I think that's so appropriate because, you see, sometimes the stuff that we are looking at, rather than, y'all don't hear what I'm about to say. You see, sometimes the stuff that we are focused on, amen, is just nothing but garbage. And we are having an accident with garbage because we want what somebody else Hey. You see, if I could handle it, God would give it to me. 
Stop praying, telling the Lord to bless you with a million dollars. If you're not tithing off the 10 you have, Let me ask you, let me, let me ask something about these smart folks. 10% of a million is how much he, he got a quick mind. 100000 dollars If you don't bring 10, you sure, excuse me for my you sure ain't gonna bring a hundred thousand. But yet we tell God, bless me with this, and then, Lord, I'll do this. The Lord is saying, be faithful over what I've given you. The best way to move up is to be faithful over what you already have. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me lest I be too long, lest I be too long. Let me, let me, let me tell the story. Uh, the scripture says that, the scripture says that, that Joseph was sold to Potiphar, and when he went into Potiphar's house, Potiphar put him over everything that he had because he saw that there was just something special about Joseph. He, he saw that there was favor upon Joseph. And everything Joseph touched, it began to prosper. And therefore, Potiphar didn't worry about anything that he had in his house because he put it all in Joseph's hand. That's some kind of trust that, that you would put a Hebrew slave, not an Egyptian, but a Hebrew slave over everything he had. The only thing he held back from him, Miss Potiphar. The only thing that he got that, that was held back from him was Miss Potiphar. The only thing that was held back from him was Miss Potiphar. Miss Potiphar gets a lot of folk in trouble. Let me let me let me tell you what, what I'm talking about. The one thing that God said you can't have is the one thing that you want. Okay, let me, let me, let me see if I can help you. You, 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 know, you know how children are. Amen. The very thing you tell them, don't do, is the very thing that intrigues them. You know, you know when, you're, when you're raising your children, you tell them, don't touch that. It's, it's, it's hard. And, and, and they look at you and inch closer and you tell them, I told you don't touch that. And they, they come back, but, but it's just something about it that, that intrigues them. And they get closer and closer. And then all of a sudden you hear a scream. Because they touched what you told them not to. A lot of times what we hear on Sunday morning is not necessarily praise and worship, but it's somebody hollering because they got too close to what God told them to leave alone. I don't, I don't want y'all to make y'all mad and you get up and walk out on me, so, so let me get back over here and talk about Joseph. You see, you see, you see, we, we don't mind, y'all don't mind me talking about Joseph, but you don't want me to get down where we live each and every day. But the only way that we can be helped is making the word of God apply to where we are each and every day of our lives. But let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you, let me, let me, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. Miss Potiphar saw this. Hebrew slave. <laughs> C 
come into the house. And she knew that her husband had put him over everything except her. Now, 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 the scripture we read said that, that he was a goodly fellow. But can I tell, can I tell y'all what, what goodly fellow means? It means he was good looking. It means he was fine from the head all the way to the foot. It means that he didn't go by the gym, but he went to the gym. And when Miss, Miss Potiphar would get up in the morning and he was there, he walked in the house and she just say, good goobly goo. And every day, the scripture said, read it. I read it. Go back home and read it. It said every day she would say to him, lay with me. Every day he would refuse. So she said, maybe I don't have on the right clothes today. So tomorrow, I'll do a little better. But no matter what she did, because Joseph was a man of integrity, his answer was always no. Watch this now, watch this. Be careful. How you try to get what don't belong to you. Let me let me let me let me let me, let me, let me help somebody out. Amen. Not 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 this part of it, but but I need to say this part. You remember, you remember, you remember when you were dating? You always put your best foot forward. Brethren, we never went with our pants hanging down. But we always put on our very best. Ladies, Even though you rolled with those things in your head, when the doorbell rang, if you didn't already have them out, you were working to get them out before he came in the house. In other words, we made sure that we put our best foot forward. And now that you got it, what are you looking at? And he's thinking, I never saw you looking like this. But guess what now? I's married now. And, and this is what you get. 
Same thing, brother, and same thing, same thing. We, 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 we put on our best, and now we want to act young. We look at what the young folk wear. And, and, and here we are, old and dirt, and we trying to look like some, some, some young person. Because we're trying to be something that we are really not. I'm, I'm, I'm not just talking. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. Let me tell you where I'm going. Joseph was a man of integrity. And no matter what Miss Potiphar did, Joseph never stopped being a, a man of integrity. When she came at him, the scripture said she did it every day. Every day that he came at, he reminded her that my master has given me everything except you. And notice what he said in that verse. He said, how can I do this to my God? You, 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 you didn't hear what I said. He didn't say to my master. But before he said, I can't do this to my master, he said, how can I do this thing to my God? Now, now, now today's male would have said, I'm down here. Sold into slavery. My, my brothers done turned their backs on me. Apparently God has turned his back on me. What difference does it make what I do? But because Joseph was a man of integrity, Joseph said, even though I don't understand what God is doing right now in my life, even though it don't make sense, even though I just don't understand why my brothers have done what they've done, why I'm in slavery, he said, I still can't turn my back on my God. Now, that's some kind of faith in God. Because a lot of us, we ask God to do something, and when he don't do it, guess what? You don't see us anymore in church. Have you ever talked to anybody who tells you what they used to be when it comes to church? And when you dig into it, they asked God for something that they didn't get. And because of that, they turned their back on God. I believe there's a scripture that says, shall we only, Job said this, shall we only receive good from God? Do you remember Job said that when he had lost everything? And his wife said to him, Job, why don't you just curse God and and die. He said, you sound like a, a foolish woman. He said, shall we only receive good at the hand of God? We know the answer is no, but why do we expect that? Y'all miss what I just said. We expect to only receive good from God. Now, we do only receive good from God, but God also allows some rain to fall in our life. If all you ever got was sunshine, you would never grow. Let me mess somebody up. We don't grow from the sunshine. We grow from the rain. If you don't get some water, you will not grow. In every life, the songwriter said, some rain must fall. But let me share something with you about the rain. Let me share something about the rain. This is what Joseph is experiencing. When I look at it, it's not just rain. It's hurry and Cain. 
It's mon and soon. And some of all of that kind of stuff that Joseph went through. Now, while it might seem like Joseph is an extreme, it's also a fact that this is what God expects of you and I. To be men and women of integrity. Uh, they sang a song, praise is what I do. And I believe y'all said, through the good and, 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 and I watch y'all, I watch y'all, I watch y'all. Y'all was up, oh, man. Did you really know what you were shouting to? Because you were really saying, Lord, it does not matter whether it's raining or whether the sun is shining. Praise is what I'm going to do. But now, if you wake up in the morning and it's storming in your life, are you going to get up and sing? Praise is what I do. It sings good. It sounds good. But it takes on a different meaning when it rests on your doorstep. Let me, let me see if I can get out of this. Let me see if I can get out of this. Because I done got way down in it. Let me back out of this. Joseph had to go through what he went through in order to get where God had called him to be. Now watch this, watch this. When you don't know what it takes to get where somebody is, be careful how you ask God to give you that. I believe that. there's another songwriter that says, you don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through. In other words, they're saying, you don't know what it has taken for me to get where I am. But even though I'm where I am, praise is what I do. Because when, 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 when it was, the sun was shining, I praised God. When it was raining, I praised God. And because I stuck with God, guess what? I am where I am today. I have what I have today. Now, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say it this way. Let me, let me get out of this. Let me, let me, I keep saying, let me get out of this. But, but let me tell you something about me. Y'all know me by now. When I, when I prepare a sermon, one of the things I do is pray. And I asked God to give me on the feet revelation. Don't y'all do that. Y'all ain't supposed to preach as long as me. I asked God to give me. They know I'm fooling with them. Uh, I asked God to give me on the feet revelation. And that's what he does. I thank God. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I thank God that he gives me on the feet revelation. Because my job is to prepare. And then when I stand up, my job is to Listen, and let him tell me what I'm supposed to do. If I let you read my paper, I'm not going to let you do it. If I let you read my paper, you see half of what I've said is not even on that paper. Because I asked God to give me on the feet revelation. Because God knows what somebody needs. Somebody in here today need exactly what I am sharing. I don't know where you are, and I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with, but there's somebody. And let me share something else with you. God will allow a preacher pastor to prepare a sermon for one person. One person. One person is just that important to God. Whoever you are, 
whoever you one person is, don't lose and don't give up your integrity. You might be on the verge of letting your integrity go. But right on the other side of where you are is your blessing. You can't see it. But it's on the other side of what you are going through right now. Don't let go and give up on your integrity. Maintain your integrity. Now, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. When Joseph ran out of his coat, Miss Potiphar kept his coat as evidence of the lie she was about to tell. Because she was not going to tell her husband what really happened. And so she said, I'll tell him that he tried to rape me and left his coat. But if you look at the sleeves, it will show that it will pull off. Rather than taking off. Y'all miss what I said. You see, when I take a coat off, it looks one way. But when, but when, but when, when a coat's pulled off, the sleeves are inside out. But because he maintained, I know I just taught somebody something. The evidence said that Joseph had done something. But watch this, watch this. While the evidence said that he had sinned, the evidence also said he left there with his integrity. He left there with his integrity because Joseph did not yield to the temptation. Don't we sing the song, Yield Not to Temptation? You see, it's not a sin to be tempted. Yielding is where the sin comes in. The end of, the story, end of this part of the story is this. Potiphar was hot at Joseph and cast Joseph into prison. But watch this. Even though he was cast into prison, he was 100% in the will of God. When his brothers threw him in the pit, when he was sold to the Ishmaelites, when he was sold to Potiphar, now he's being cast into prison. He's 100% in the will of God. Because everything he faced took him a step closer to becoming prime minister of all of Egypt. Amen. And he had to go through every one of these things in order to get where God had called him to be. He had to learn how to say no to a woman because as prime minister, he knew that somebody would be knocking on his door. Every situation prepared him for where God had called him to be. As I close, I want to say this to somebody. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever you're dealing with tonight, right now, you might not understand the situation you're in, the situation that you're dealing with. But it's a, it's a situation that's taking you closer to the blessing that God has for you. Amen. Now, be aware of this. Be aware of this. Satan is trying to use whatever it is to discourage you, to stop you, to make you turn around. But hang in there. Because God is using that same situation to place you where he's called you to be. 
Let me share this with you. The dream that he had, the dream that Joseph had of the sheaves bowing down to his sheaves. If he had yielded to Potiphar's wife, he would have never made it to the point of prime minister. God showed him corn in a field that represented where he was going to be in life. You see, sometimes God shows us things and it looked like one thing, but God is actually trying to tell us something else. But his brothers, as you know, had to come and bow down to him. But can you imagine how once he became prime minister, can you imagine how Potiphar and his wife must have felt? Because now he's number two in all of Egypt. And his voice was the next voice that people heard other than Pharaoh. And can you imagine the sleepless nights that Potiphar and his wife had? Because now Joseph is prime minister. But watch this. When you get where God has called you to be, the way God called you to be there, in other words, you didn't hook and crook to get there. You, you, you let God take you there. When you get there that way, let me tell you what you can do. Those folk who mess with you on your way up, you can turn around, Reverend, and say to those same individuals, you meant it unto me for evil. You thought you were going to destroy me. You tried to take me down and take me out. But God took what you throwed against me and he turned it for my good. So he could tell his brothers, he could tell Potiphar and his wife what you didn't realize. You are all part of God's plan. And I'm here, and there's nothing you can do about it. Watch this. When man puts you in a place, he can also take you out of that place. But when God puts you there, can't nobody take you out. May God bless you, and may God keep you as our friend. The doors of the church.